Et si plutôt que de changer nos modes and de production, if instead of changing our production and consumption uh, approaches, we were to capture CO2 and place it and store it underground. What if instead instead of changing our economic model, we were to throw aerosols in the atmosphere to change climate change. This is the myth which has been analyzed by Clive Hamilton. All these technologies aim at fighting against climate change via technology. This promise is a myth because these techniques are extremely dangerous for climate if they were to fail, but also because they cannot meet the challenges of circular economy, which aims at reducing greenhouse emissions, but also, and more importantly, meet the challenge of resource scarcity. Circular economy can be supported and encouraged by a set of techniques and technologies which are currently being developed. It's, for instance, the case for a product you might be familiar with. It's Fairphone. It's a smartphone with modular components. Concretely speaking, it means that this smartphone can be more easily repaired than when you use a smartphone from another brand. So it means that you can remove, replace all the components one by one if they are failing or if some are still operating. So Fairphones can be a more circular smartphone thanks to the reuse of certain components and thanks to the repair the easier repair of the product. So it's like eco-design in the field of mobile phones. And this goes against what some current companies do when they solder the components in smartphones to prevent them from being reused and in order to encourage people to buy new phones. This innovation, because this is an innovation, is made possible through research and components are, can be interchanged thanks to this innovation. This is also the case with other technologies or techniques and social organizations because in circular economy we can think about 3D printing. 3D printing is a set of processes to produce layer by layer, to produce a physical object starting from a digital object. So in concrete terms, your bike just broke, and instead of changing your bike, you could, and you can actually, thanks to a dedicated 3D printer, which is going to reproduce some of the components of your bike, you can print and produce the missing part and make your bike ride again without having to buy for a new bike. This is what 3D printing allows in consumers' daily lives. At industrial level, it also helps reduce the consumption of raw materials which are needed to produce a product. So we're no longer producing massively using tons of raw materials, but we just customize production for one product without the addition of uh, additional raw materials. 3D printing encourages repairs, as we said, with the bike. It also encourages social organizations that encourage repairs with the Fab Labs that, or other organizations that organize repair cafes that bring together people who know how to use 3D printers or who have repair tools and people who have objects that came to the end of their life cycle and that they wish to repair. 3D printing can be found in 
Fab Labs, on en retrouve plus d'une centaine and there are more than a hundred throughout the world, and uh, many of them in Fab France. These Fab Labs are open to the public, and they provide tools like this 3D printing for the design and production of objects. They also make repair more democratic. So we saw that 3D printing allows repairing, designing products at industrial level without having to add non-necessary uh, raw materials. But this leads to legal questions. Likewise, for other innovations, how with 3D printing, how can you get the exact design plan for the bike you bought if the producer of this bike has not made this plan available to everyone so that you can reproduce some parts of the bike. Some websites and platforms are already offering thousands of digital plans that allow you to use 3D printers to print lots of objects you use in your daily life. Now, maybe this will have more global consequences on the economy and on society at large, as promised by Winson, a company based near Shanghai, that demonstrates that it's possible to print 3D buildings and houses. The number of workers uh, decreases quite a lot, and Winson claims that they're using raw material, mostly from recycled raw material. This construction using 3D printers would allow building much faster, but would also use and create less waste in terms of raw materials. Now, we need to provide evidence that the environmental impact of such building design is better for the environment and for society than traditional and well-structured building in real estate. Let's take a look at another technology, that of algae production. Algae can produce energy. Algae can be a raw material. They can be used for the production of biofuels. And there are many experiments underway in the world in order to develop algae. Here is an example. The cement production sign in Gargenville, and they have a furnace, and they signed a partnership with the French research lab in order to install an algae production that would reduce the emission of greenhouse gases. Algaes would feed on the exhaust smokes and would produce energy. We could also apply this algae production to other in areas in the uh, in the in society why not in including algae in the windows of a building because they would capture solar energy and turn it into heating for the building and reduce the energy consumption of a building with regards to fossil fuels and they would uh, use biosourced energy from algae it is not just a utopia, because this building, it does exist in Hamburg, Germany. Part of its heating is produced thanks to algae, which are located in the windows around the building. Of course, a certain number of corrections need to be anticipated in order to uh, uh, grow the production of algae at global level. And maybe in the future we'll have lots of biofuels based on algae, or maybe a new raw material will come and compete plastic and will be uh, made from algae. Many companies are working on this, and you can already find memory sticks which are currently produced just using algae 
as a raw material for the plastic part of the memory stick. So these are many technologies that would encourage many pillars of circular economy and would encourage its development. But let's remember of the myth of geoengineering and remember what François Gross demonstrated beyond 1% growth in the use of a raw material, even if we recycle 99% of this material, it would only have a very small impact on the sustainability of this resource. So with circular economy, we work on life cycle, and this is what we said with 3D printing and repairs, and this can be encouraged by these new technologies. Functionality economy, which is selling a use rather than a product, encourages encourages companies selling use to use products which last longer and are more compliant with the environment. We also talk about making the environmental cost be paid for and replace existing products, for instance, plastic, with a raw material which is more compliant with the environment, like algae. So, according to you, which would be the technology that would encourage circular economy? <laughs>